Can you tell me your name? Robert DuPont. Robert DuPont. Rachel Vancelet. Okay, and what are you guys doing here today? I'm checking out art. Yeah. What about you? Uh, just looking around at art. We're having a good time. Look at Andy Warhol. Look at Andy Warhol. Do you ever bother to read all these great interpretations about your work? Uh, can I just answer a little bit? Yes, you can. Uh, oh, he was amazing. He was a good friend, and I even met him when I was 17 and my twin brother and I, and um, we were his muses. Yeah, and um, I'm just looking around all the, the worlds on the market right now, compared to when I first met him in 77. Well, number nine then, it's the Triple Elvis, the Ferris type. Here it is, brought from Thomas Aman in 1977. And where should we open this, the 63 painting? $48 million to open it please, at 48 million. When something million. was like 10,000, like millions now. So it's like, it's it's different, you know? Are you gonna take any of these home? I would love one. I've, I, I've been looking at a few with Rachel. 60 million is bid, and we're off at 60 million and selling. Um, I think there's a wonderful work at Honor Fraser that everyone should check out. I really fantastic. Each one is kind of the most exciting thing I've ever seen. It's really great. Uh, it's a sculpture that's a, a, about 100 arrows um, pointed in one direction. Why do you like it? I don't know, I just aesthetically think it's pleasing, so. It's nice to meet you, Gustav. Could you tell me about what we're looking at? This is just a disgusting, very misogynistic piece. Um, it's racist, it has uh, all this connotation uh, about how America was taken from the Native Americans with these arrows. And, you know, I, I hope that uh, we can find sanctity within this art fair. Um, because everything I've seen is, is just is just totally off base and, and uh, just disgusting. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I know it's we're a drawing by Camille Henro. What is that a drawing of? It's a new series that she's done, and it's a dog pissing into a man's mouth. Now, has have been has that been sold yet, or it is still available? There's been a lot of interest in it. There's been a lot of pictures taken of it. I think I want to buy it. How much? You know, if we don't sell by the end of the day, I'm going to buy it because I love it so much. So why did you change the name to, for, to Art F City from Art Fag City? That is a great question, and I honestly have never done anything for them. This is my first time doing anything uh, for them. I know they changed change the name. Back. Why do you think they should change it back? Because Art Fag City sounds much better. I agree, 100%. Yeah. As a fag, I agree. <laughs> as a fag, I agree. A neff is better as a fag than a fuck. When I walked up, you said, we're selling some art. What are you selling? Uh, well, Evan's thinking about some, getting some of these John Miller. Because I think it's beautiful. I'm uh, very interested in art. I have been for a long time. And uh, thinking of buying that piece because it looks a little bit like it's a painting, but at the same time, it's quite sculptural. And I like that sort of mixture between the two. So I'm just here making sure nobody steals none of the nice artwork and stuff like that. I don't want to be loyal or liable for anything that goes missing. So I'm just here, you know, trying to work and also at the same time enjoy the artwork. Yeah. Have you seen anything you liked? Um, I have and I haven't because I've only been in this location so I can only look back and forth at these two pictures but they're pretty interesting. Yeah. Could you tell me about these photos? Um, I can't tell you too much. I'm not even exactly sure what I'm looking at. It looks like that one maybe like a temple or something has six steps, two sides of steps going up and down. This one, I'm not really sure what it is, but I heard the guy speak about it a lot of times. He said it's a lot of pictures within pictures that make one picture, which is pretty cool. It's in a desolated area somewhere in a Sahara Desert. Not too sure. Black and white picture looks pretty cool. I wouldn't mind having it on my wall or something. Yeah. All right. What have you seen that you like so far? Uh, well, I mean, it's more just the people. I've just been talking to people, people okay. who I liked. Yeah. I'd say you're number one, your favorite person. So far. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so I, is that a textbook down there? Um, yes, it is. I'm actually studying. I went to school for 
um, Lincoln Tech, be an electrical system technician, and all my off time since I have nothing but eight hours to sit around. Figure why not focus and um, touch up on my studies a little bit. All right, and what else are you up to? How else do you pass the time? I'm um, passing time, social social sites. You have to have an Instagram, have to have a Netflix. Maybe watch about two movies, take a break, wander around, come back, take another break, watch two movies. By the time you know it, it's time to go home. So you got to do it. You can't stay bored, man. Got to look busy at all times. P-I-T-T-E-R-M-A-N, Larry Margie. All right, and what are you guys doing here today? Walking through the art fair. <laughs> that simple? That simple. Yeah, we that come simple. every year. We like seeing what's new and like reacquainting with what we are comfortable with. And we are actually glass collectors, studio glass collectors. So there have been a few pieces that we've seen that uh, were interesting. Okay, why glass? because that's what we collect. <laughs> think, of, think of glass as three-dimensional sculpture with a different material than stone or steel. So it's just, it's glass sculpture. So you can blow it, you can cast it, you can, you can uh, flame work it, and it has infinite properties of color and composition, and it's a terrific art form. All right, so um, what are we looking at? What is? Tell me about this painting. This is a this is a work by uh, an Aboriginal artist called Paddy uh, Paddy Lewis. Paddy Lewis passed away three years ago, sadly. Uh, he was an old man, one of the elders of his tribe. We think in paintings as being squares always, but straight lines. But it's absolutely for people that are not used to that. It's a very weird way of looking at nature, life, or art. So you imagine just being somewhere, we'd stay there on, a, on a, some kind of rock outing to sleep every night and we would make a fire, and make some steaks on the fire and you go to sleep in the middle of nowhere knowing that around you probably in a circle of like maybe 50 to 100 miles there's not another human being. I mean I live in a room with no windows so any kind of art in my room is sort of uplifting. Uh, I don't know, uh, I guess yeah, there's been a few pieces. There seems to be a big thing going on with lenticular art, so that's pretty cool. What's lenticular? It's like it looks like 3D, but it's I mean it is 3D. It's like a 3D effect. So every time you like move it, kind of like waves and the image moves as well. I don't know. And it's like a, it's like a it's like a paper GIF. Yeah. Let's talk about that piece I in particular. This is, is especially. I mean, you see it. It is, it's two pieces from a whale spine. So from its materiality, it's already, already quite interesting. And this artist is a Detroit artist and he works a lot with this kind of distortions and, and kind of putting together man-made materials with organic materials and then creating this kind of weird objects that even, I think, even if you don't know, you look at it and it's like, what the fuck is that? Like, you know, it's kind of makes you curious. Okay, what is that, yeah? And then you see, this metal piece is from a ladder, so he took out, he ripped out a ladder, or maybe he found it. We don't know. And then it's also kind of broken. And his works usually relate to body parts, so this could be like maybe part of a torso with an arm, and it's wounded, or it's you know it's kind of vulnerable, and that's like we are, you know. And I think it's a very human piece, so I don't, I usually um, don't think it's you know. Like when somebody says, I don't understand the work, or like, tell me what it is, I say, like, just look at it and maybe you can, maybe you can relate to it or you don't. And then it's up to you to find it interesting or not. You know, it's like, it's kind of not, I think it's up to you. You know, you should challenge yourself maybe if you don't understand, if we want to use the word challenge, you know. I do want to use the word. Okay, have you sold this sculpture yet? No, but it's on hold. But I, I'm, this one, I'm very sure that we're going to sell it. Uh, how do art fair people compare with other events? Well, let's just say that uh, it's very different. Some 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 people are um, they get aggravated quick, you know. 
I would say that this is the most one where they get they feel powerful, like they feel like they control everything and they don't have control over certain things. Power control. When you say that, what are you thinking of? Was there an incident? No, I don't there wasn't no incident. It's just that when you tell somebody that's worth more than you or something, or your their picture's worth more than you, you know, you tell them no, they don't like that answer. They want everything. Yes, I can do that. I can do this. That's interesting. Has that been happening a lot today? All day. All day it's been happening. So what is it? People try and get through this door? Yeah, they're trying to come back through this door. And it's your job to tell them? No. <laughs> Do you buy art? Uh, yes, but don't tell my wife. <laughs> Why not? Oh. No, she's, she's supportive. Just kidding. <laughs> what does she think of artwork? She likes art. Um, she thinks uh, we have too much, but, uh, but she likes it. If you bought these, where would you put them? <laughs> In storage, <laughs> along with most of the other art. I mean, it's a globe that's spinning quite fast so that you can no longer make out the distinction between land and sea or any of the boundaries that we've drawn on the map seems like it's a crowd pleaser, right? Absolutely. Have you sold the spinning globe? Yes. Really? Who bought it? I can't say, but it's sold. Can you give me a hint? <laughs> no, I can't. Then Please give me a hint. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. But anyway, I think that um, I, I adore this light box very much. But that's, that's gone too. But I think that one would be my choice for sure. Why do you like it? It's very ghostly, um, and the piece is actually um, an old billboard that was selling out, uh, light bulbs that the artist found outside of a shop in Dubai, and the sun had so bleached the image that he thought it was a really beautiful relationship between what it was showing and the way uh, it's been treated. It kind of shows you that some things that you're attracted to might not actually be good for you. And this very delicate kind of ghostly quality to it. So he bought the tarpaulin from the shopkeeper and he just put it in this light box. And I think it's really lovely. That is amazing. Now that I know how, where it came from, I mean, how do people react when you tell them that they this freak was... freak out. They freak out. Everyone loves this piece. 